This right here should be interesting because it's actually inspired by another interview that I saw where uh, Jim really, really, really went in. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is getting over versus being put over. I am your host, and let's get right into it. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are here with, uh, yet again, Jim Cornette and uh, the great Brian Lass. Jim Cornette on, on where Triple H would be if he hadn't married... If he hadn't married Stephanie McMahon, this was published on uh, May. F no, sorry. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm right. Well, no, I'm, I'm wrong. It's April 7th of 2020. Sorry, I'm looking at the one that was above that. My bad. Anyway, <laughs> this is from April 7th of 2020. Um, the link to the original video will be down in the description. Now, the reason why I chose this is because uh, I remember. It was a shoot interview with Sean Oliver. Everybody knows. If you guys have watched shoot interviews, you know who that is. And uh, and Jim Cornette was talking about the click. And I think he might have been talking about either the Madison Square Garden incident, the curtain call, or he talked about just Hunter being punished in general afterwards and how he should have won the King of the Ring that particular year the curtain call happened. And he didn't, which he lost about $100,000, $150,000, and so on and so forth. And, I, and Jim, in his typical way of going about it, said that, uh, um, and uh, how after the curtain call and how he got punished and after he lost all these opportunities, that he went around to everybody, essentially, and apologized and so on and so forth, trying to kiss up to people. And um, then years later, uh, Hunter had a, uh, or Triple H, he had a, a promo that he was doing where he actually showed the incident on the Titantron and he was basically like, oh, I wasn't, you know, I knew I was revolution, I was helping to revolutionize the business and I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, apologetic or whatever because I knew what I was doing was, was pushing the business forward and so on and so forth. And Jim said something along the lines that he's like, well, yeah, he had been kissing people's ass for the longest time or whatever, but uh, he doesn't have to do that now because he's licked the right crack to get him into the family, something along those lines. It was brutal. It was fucking brutal how he said that shit. Um, you, there is only one Jim Cornette. So, <laughs> but uh, I remember hearing that and I was like, Jesus Christ. It wrong, but Jesus Christ. And then I found some uh, some old interviews where they talk about when Hunter left WCW to come to the WWF, and obviously he was hanging around Sonny and Chris a lot at that time, and. Uh, and how, you know, he was just kind of like a lonely puppy, essentially, just kind of following them and seeing how they were interacting and seeing where things were and so on and so forth. And then once he got cool with Sean and uh, obviously Razor and uh, Kevin and all them guys, uh, then he was like carrying their bags for them and doing all this extra shit and yada, 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 yada. Now, it doesn't matter now because Hunter's the man. You know what I'm saying? He's married into the family. He's got a piece of the business, so on and so forth. And um, his direction for the WWE is way different than Vince's. And it looks like, as if it has, it wasn't already cemented, that when Vince McMahon passes, it'll be Hunter who will at least be the one who will be. He'll be the man. He's going to be the one that's going to push push the WWE into into that era. And you've seen what he does, what he did, what he does with NXT. So make of that what you will. Anyway, the what if scenario on where Hunter would be if he didn't marry Stephanie is probably an interesting way of looking at a situation because we're going to hear uh, Brian's going to actually tell us what Hunter thinks, and then we're going to actually hear what Jim thinks, and then I'll jump in there in between. I have to tell you that if Hunter never married into that family, he wouldn't be where he's at now. Not in, not with the type of power and protection that he has. Because if that's something that, at least to some degree, that Vince has demonstrated, is he will protect his family. Even though him and Shane had the fallout, and so on and so forth, and, you know, Shane's obviously come back. Granted, Vince should have probably listened to Shane when it came to the UFC back in, all, in, those, in, those, in that day. Or back in those days, I should say. But, you know, 
Vince didn't really understand what mixed martial arts were. They may have driven it into the ground. Who could who could you know look at the XFL and how that situation played out? Uh, the Rock actually purchased that too. Um, I think he purchased that with either his ex-wife, it's his ex-wife, I think, because they're still on friendly terms and shit. I think it was his current wife. I think I think it was his current wife's idea, but he actually purchased it with his ex-wife. Something like that. We'll get into that at a later time. But um, you you see how that went and whatnot. But Vince laid down the groundwork, so The Rock should have. An easy time with that but the UFC was just a whole nother mess in itself and all those issues and so on and so forth plus Dana White has had allegedly issues with uh, Japan at one time I'm not sure if that ended up getting worked out but certainly has an issue with Mexico hence the reason why the UFC has never been able to get into get in there deep for obvious reasons um, if you know you know uh, and and just all kinds of just scandals and bullshit that's been going along I don't know if Vince would have had the would have wanted to deal with that, especially since Vince has had his own scandals and ducking taxes and doing other bullshit allegedly throughout his time with the WWF. Anyway, point being, this is about Hunter. Let's see what these guys think about it. I'll chime in where I can. And um, I think it'll be interesting in general. I'll give you guys my take when we get there. Ladies and gentlemen, this is getting over versus being put over. Here we go. Opening bell. This first one, Jim, was sent in to Corny Drive Through at gmail.com from William in Brandon, Florida. Hello, Jim. This was Jim. Again, ladies and gentlemen, we're here with Jim Cornette and Brian Last. Jim Cornette on where Triple H would be if he hadn't married Stephanie McMahon. And yet again, this is from April 7th of 2020, our current year. Here we go. His response to a question about where he would be if he did not marry Stephanie. Quote, from a business standpoint, I like to think I'd be doing the same thing because of that relationship I had with Vince and the creative relationship that we had long before any of that. He was referring to his relationship with Vince at the start of the Attitude Era when he was helping Vince with booking ideas. <clears throat> set the story straight on this, and please set the story straight about how Triple H and Stephanie's relationship got started. I've heard so many different versions of this by Triple H himself that I've lost track. Okay, real quick. Well, so, <laughs> would he be where he's at now, like in his current position? Like I said, I'll, I don't, he wouldn't have the protection... And Vince would probably scrutinize him. Um, I don't know if he would, because he's kind of hard on his kids, kind of. But then again, you know, Stephanie's ahead of creative, and you see how that. Uh, anyway, um, I don't know. I, I don't think he would. I don't think he'd have the muscle that he he currently has. I think that's. I think that's obviously there's nepotism there. Um, I think, in some ways, and I mean in some ways, no disrespect to Shane, but in some ways, I think he looks at Hunter as the son that he thought maybe he should have had. Now, that's just my own opinion, okay? And I'm not saying I've I, I've never heard of that anywhere. I've never read that anywhere. It's just when you read accounts or you hear about accounts of how they kind of mingle with each other and so on and so forth, that's what, you know, that's w the way it was. That's the way it seemed to me when it was described to me. I'm not saying that's how the person or persons tried to describe it or how I read it. And whatnot, just just my impression. That's how I took from it. Um, so I think Vince would have valued him. He may have valued him as much as he values Sean, despite the alleged allegations with that. We'll go over that at one time or another eventually. But um because Hunter is versatile. He has he he's willing to learn. He's always has been. So that puts him in that makes him invaluable, but not irreplaceable. Um you see, you know, it is what it is. So I, I don't know if I, I could say that. I don't know if I, I would say he would have as much muscles he has now, but who could say? What I will say is uh, that whole thing with creative during the Attitude Era or before at the beginning of it, have no clue. I do think that Hunter should weigh, should bear some of the blunt of the responsibility of Brett getting fucked with the Montreal Screwjob. 
Now that's part of my overall theory, but just hear me out just briefly and we'll cover that later on down the line. When Sean, when the negotiations, because that's kind of how it was pegged out. When these negotiations or when these things are getting worked out about, okay, who's going to drop, is Brett going to drop the belt? Is he going to just, you know, is he going to let Hunter, or sorry, is he going to let Sean go over on him? So on and so forth. At one point, Sean was like, I don't care. I don't give a shit if he wants to win in Montreal. If I'm going to get the belt eventually or the next night or a week later or whatever, I don't care. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Let me go off there, do my thing and whatnot. He can pin me or sharpshooter me or whatever. And I'll give him, you know, and then he'll pay, pass me the belt the next night. I'll talk my shit about him. And then fuck him. He's gone. Because Sean in his head probably was going to do all that bullshit with the midget and all that nonsense later on anyway. So he was going to get his final digs, if you will, on Brett regardless. It was now, according to the story, it's Hunter who was the one who basically convinced Sean, fuck that. He's living, leaving the company. He needs to drop the belt. And don't let him walk with this. And Sean was allegedly saying, I don't care. I'm going to get it eventually anyway. Who gives a shit? We'll clown him when he leaves. No, no, no. Fuck it. You humiliate him right then and there. If you got to cut it, if you got to slit his throat in the middle of that goddamn ring to get that belt back, then that's what we're going to do. Because we can't just let him jump ship with the, with the luxury of him just passing the belt over. Fuck that. Take that shit from him. Now, that mindset was something that Sean would have instilled in him as well as Hall and Nash and who and you know and so on and so forth so in actual and that right there allegedly was the final push for Sean to be like you know what I'm not gonna let him go over now one of the big questions briefly one of the big questions is who agreed on on who agreed for that spot to let for Sean to put Brett into that sharpshooter. Who right, who's the one who said that's how that's going to happen? That right there is is the real question that no one really asks. That we need to know that. But either here or there. The point being is that Hunter deserves some of that that blame, obviously. Because you know, Sean and Hunter obviously knew what was going on. They knew what the they knew what fuckery was about to go on that night. But Hunter deserves even more responsibility than what he's been taking. You know what I mean? He deserves the blunt of that. For sure. And whether he thought it was right for business or he wanted to start establishing his dominance or whatever the case may be. Or he wanted to ingratiate himself to, to, um, to Vince. Either way, this is the same dude that when he got pressed by Brett's wife, he had his head down and said, oh, no shit, I didn't have nothing to do with this. I swear to God, I didn't. That shit. And if any of you guys saw, I think it was about Wrestling with Shadows. I think when you see that shit, it was like, uh. And she could smell it. She smelled the bullshit on him. She smelled the fear. Because any real man who didn't do nothing wrong would have looked her dead in her face and be like, I didn't know jack shit. I swear to you, I didn't know jack shit. Nah, he had his head, he had his chin deep in his chest. Deep in his chest. China could barely look. But then again, I don't know how much China knew and how much she didn't. But I'm just saying. She, he... He deserves the blunt of that shit. The blunt of it. I wasn't there in the car with him, so I don't know how the relationship got started. I'm not going to comment on people's relationships, but I don't know anything about them. Uh, but I can comment on that. Yes, it, it, during the Attitude Era, when Triple H was one of the main event guys, he was the latter stages of the Attitude Era. The first stage of the Attitude Era, he wasn't a main event guy. But uh, he was given Vince ideas like every other top guy did. And he always did take more incentive. You know, he would... And Michaels, I think, wanted to sit in the production meeting so he could figure out who to fucking sabotage later on. Uh, Triple H started sitting in the production meetings, etc. He was always interested in the business end. Uh, but to... Uh, I think it's a stretch at minimum to say that he would be whatever his title is now, vice president and executive assistant grand poobah of the WWE. That's, had he not <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, I'm, we're going to talk about Sean later on, too, because I can't remember. There's a channel I found that actually has a couple of shoot interviews with Sean. I haven't sat down and watched any of them. I might not even watch any of them. I might just go ahead and just, we'll just do it live. We'll do it live um, when we get there. But, um... For all of Sean's fucking God-given talent, right? 
on and off the fucking drugs. Jesus Christ, dude. Like, you spend, you're going into production meetings to find the next victim or potential victims, which leads to an interesting story that I had found recently, where at one time or another, when, because you know, The Rock or, you know, Dwayne Johnson, when he was coming up, he had a kind of, he, he wasn't getting over, you know what I'm saying, the way they, they kind of wanted him to initially. And uh, maybe because the Rocky Maya via gimmick was, uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it, was, it, was it, it just wasn't clicking. It wasn't clicking. And so it kind of, and if I remember correctly, didn't he beat Rocky Maya via beat Hunter at one time uh, during his early stages? And an alleged, I had heard allegedly Hunter had always had some type of feeling about that, but semantics. Um, but we'll, we'll we'll touch on that later. But uh, Rocky's early persona wasn't really clicking. And at one time, it was suggested to Brett to that he would be in a match with Rock. Or he wasn't the Rock yet, but I, I don't think he was the Rock. But he, you're going to be in the in the match with Rocky. And uh, and I, they wanted him to sharpshoot him right in the middle of the goddamn ring. Like he, he was, he was going to beat Rocky clean and, and, and whatever. And Brett was like, no, nah, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing it because, one, he has a lot of talent. This kid's going to go somewhere. And I'm not going to... I'm not going to beat him in the middle of the ring like that. that. That could hurt him for years to come, to be honest. That could, really, that could bury him, even. I'm will, I would put him over. I would do that. I will do that for him if, if that's what needs to be. We can have a great match out of it because I know the kid is capable of doing it, and I'll put him over. Allegedly, Sean and Hemsley hear this shit, and they're like, what the fuck? And they went ahead and cried and complained and did all they bitching and so on and so forth. But... Allegedly, Hunter, allegedly, air quotes, allegedly, Hunter took a lot of offense to that. Like, why would you go ahead and put this dude over? Like, why would you be willing to do that? It's strange type type of mindset. But then one could say, given how Hunter kind of fucked Booker later and whatnot, it kind of, eh, make of that what you will. Um, allegedly. <laughs> uh, so that's a thing, too. So you got to understand, like, what some of this shit some of this shit just runs deep. And for no goddamn reason. Now, I'm sure, as it pertains to my early example, that The Rock and Hunter are fucking, you know, great friends now and shit. You know, they're older. It is what it is. But back in those young days when it was, they were, everybody was fucking wolves and shit, and, you know, everybody out for blood, who knows what some of these guys were thinking who weren't. You know what I mean? Like, there's a bunch of salacious stories out there about a lot of nonsense, a lot about a lot of shit that was said, about a lot of shit that was done. And everybody likes to cover some of that up, saying, oh, it's not true, or it was just a rib. I don't know. Some of that stuff don't sound like ribs to me. Uh, some of that shit don't sound like ribs to a lot of people, to be honest. But make of that what you will. Um, it's examples like that, you know, to be honest, where it makes you question exactly how much power some of these guys had and where they were willing to take it. You know what I mean? So it's just kind of something to think about. How the relationship between Hunter and Stephanie started, I couldn't tell you. Um, there are plenty of stories out there. We know what it did to China and whatnot. And in, in, in another shoot interview, she definitely didn't think highly of Stephanie on how Stephanie kind of pulled it away, pulled Hunter away from her. But then it's alleged that there was already problems in Hunter and China's relationship anyway. Uh, I've heard stuff about Hunter wanted to have a family. China wasn't into that because she had a kind of rough childhood or whatever the case may be. Um, Stephanie, who is a McMahon, who isn't stupid, and who keeps the and ha has her eye on the ball, uh, may have caught wind of some of these things. She may have even buddied up to China at one time or another. I don't think China would be the one to be loose lip about it, but who could say? So she knew exactly how to to appeal to Hunter. And then for Hunter's career and for his, his love of the business, what what path do you think would be, what's the real path to power, if you will? But that's all, yet again, That's make of that what you will. I'm, I couldn't tell you with any certainty, any certainty. I've just read a lot of interesting shit. <laughs> um, but who could say? Married the boss's daughter 
Um, I just for no matter how much Vince has loved somebody or no matter how long they have worked there in any position of responsibility, there comes a time when you must go. And I don't know that he, that time would have come for him had he not been part of the family. Uh, so yeah, he was always interested in the, in the business and he was obviously always a, an, a, a, uh, a politician, let's say, that wanted to get involved in the office, but uh, Brian, <laughs> without having, could anybody have stayed in that position or a position of power, position of prominence that long in the WWE and not been fired except if they were part of the family? The only other person I could think of would be Pat Patterson. Yeah, and, and Pat came and went a few times and Pat a couple times was going to retire and a couple times wasn't. And then he would come back on his schedule. He wasn't a constant presence of, uh, you know, over the last 15 or 20 years or whatever, but also he didn't, Pat never wanted to, to work in the office. Per, he did, He wanted to be in the office. He didn't want to work in the office. He didn't want to go to the office every day. He wanted to be what in the office used to be in wrestling, working on creative with Vince at the house or in the car or whatever. Um, so Pat was never wanting to be a vice president and and be in the, the business end of things and, you know, do what Triple H has done. He That wasn't his interest. <clears throat> so I th if he had if he had have had to do that also I mean for fuck's sake Vince just fired the the two top executives in the company because he got up on the wrong side of the bed and just decided to do it I guess because normally they they you know plan these things out but he just nope they're gone they're done so yeah without having been married to to Stephanie I don't think even Shane. Shane left and went and did his own shit because he saw that Vince was not going to put the company in his hands, going to put it in, in Stephanie's hands and just decided to go and do his own thing. A lot of shit would have been different if Vince had listened to Shane. Shane wanted to buy the UFC before the fucking Fertitas did. Vince didn't know what the fucking UFC was. Well, on this topic, I see here we got another quick, email. Before, and I'm going to cut Brian off, but, um, it is interesting to me that he wouldn't, that the reins didn't get passed to Shane. Now, granted, Shane's Shane's outlook on the business is different from from uh, Vince's, obviously. And you know, you don't want to disappoint your father, but at the same time, though, too, you got to be your own man because that's the way, only way Vince is going to respect you. And uh, and I understand that they were at, there was a time where they were putting a lot of emphasis on Shane. And Shane was really kind of needed to be there, if you will, or at least Vince thought so. And the alleged Shane went ahead, took his ball, and went home. And Vince never really lived that down, or never let Shane live it down, I should say. And I get it. There are creative differences and whatnot. And I heard, and I, I think I read it, actually. No, I heard it. I think I heard it first, and then I ended up reading it later, where Shane basically did an interview where he was like, the love of my father meant more than doing what was right for my father. Which is an interesting position to be put in, if you think about it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, at the end of the day, his father's life is the business. At the same time, his love for his father outweighs even that for the business. You know what I mean? It's just a... I mean, it's a hard position to be put in, I guess. Uh, to be honest with you. It's a very hard position to be. But then again, if you really sit back and look at it, look at all the troubles that... Vince has had, well, the WWE has had over the years with trying to push certain people and and all the debacles and all the bullshit, maybe listening to Shane in those early years wouldn't have been a bad idea. You know what I mean? Maybe having a bunch of yes-men around you isn't the best idea. Um, I mean, like I said, it's hard to say, though, I suppose. It, it, I guess it's all on how you look at the situation. I think Shane deserves more than what he has. I think Shane has given a lot to Vince and to the business, to the family business actually, not just the fucking business, but the family business, to where he deserves more. You know what I mean? It is what it is. I don't know. It's it's hard to say. That, that whole McMahon thing is really wild. Linda running for 
trying to get into political office for as long as she has, despite all the enemies that she has. Vince not really helping, and some people even believe was the early hindrance on why she couldn't get into politics the way she want, where she wanted to be. I mean, it's just a mess. It really is. But you would think, just on the sake of tradition, because Vince is, what, a third-generation promoter? Because if I remember correctly, his grandfather was a promoter, his father was, and then he is. So passing it to Shane only makes sense. And it's not like Shane couldn't do it, because Shane started from the bottom and everything. So, I don't know. I guess that's a discussion for another day. I guess this may be from the same interview. This was sent to Courtney Drive through at gmail.com from Tom Hennessy in Philadelphia. Triple H was doing an interview with one of Barstool's podcasts, and they asked how he became the booker. And Triple H goes, well, it was Vince and two guys, and the first guy had left, and then Vince Russo left to go to WCW, which turned out to be a great decision. <laughs> so I just told Vince... Since he was by himself, if he ever needed someone to bounce ideas off, yada, yada, yada. What? And then this guy, Tom, wrote, I found it fucked up that he couldn't even say Jim's name. Jim left because he hated Russo. He never did anything fucked up to Vince. I guess because Jim reminds them of actual wrestling, they won't use his name anymore. Well, no, Please I let just... Jim know about this bullshit. I find it hilarious sh- WWE tries to bury anything to do with wrestling. So uh, what, what are your thoughts well, on but, Triple H's but, story no, of how he joined the booking team? I didn't get that, that he couldn't say my name. I just, what the, when the fuck does he think any of this actually happened? That's hilarious. He, but um, even still, it's obvious that the first guy he's talking about is Jim. But Jim just left the left booking or left the creative team first. And then he didn't leave until to go to OVW um, until much later or until a little bit later, I should say. And whatnot, because that's when he talked to Jim Ross, and then you know he pitched the idea, and then he and it was going to be in his hometown, so he had no reason not to do it, and that's why he ended up going to OVW. But um, I don't even know if Jim has actually even had any real issues with Hunter outside of the curtain call. I wouldn't say they had anything personal and whatnot, but obviously when someone doesn't want to say your name, they do it for a reason. Um, more often than not, either they're doing it because to spite you, or they're doing it to protect you. And I don't see Hunter trying to protect uh, Jim for any rhyme or reason. Not for any good one, anyway. First of all, Triple H was never the fucking booker. Secondly... Not only that, but when now that I think about it real quick, when you think about creative, you think you had Vince Russo, you had Jim Cornette, you had Jim Ross, you had Bruce Pritcher. You had Pat Patterson. There's always some... There was generally always someone there. Now that I think about it. <laughs> like, there was always someone there. Uh, anyway, whatever. By the time that Russo and fucking... Uh, Ferrara, the paper carrier... By the time they bailed and went, that's when he was starting to do the fucking TV writer thing anyway. And then Stephanie became the head of creative somehow with an assist with a team of writers assisting her. Um, that he just encapsulated about a fucking three or four year period there and, and called himself the booker. Did you ever hear it reported that Triple H was the booker of the WWF? I did not. And just to be clear, though, this is what Tom Hennessy from Philadelphia is saying. We don't know if these are the exact words. Well, yes, that's why I'm Triple saying H. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't know about that whole thing. So he was when you were still on the creative team, as we now call it, the booking team, and it was you and Russo and Vince and I guess Bruce Pritchard had a he would pop in and out, and and Jr. and Jr. Pat Patterson wasn't actively participating, and was um, Triple H already actively participating? No, Triple H wasn't doing it. This was 96 and 97. Triple H wasn't doing anything but getting heat all over himself. He got fucking... Uh, it, that was King of the Ring 96 when he participated in the curtain call, and nobody wanted to fucking speak to him for six months or so. And with me, it was longer. Um and, and uh, Pat was still popping in and out. Yes, Pat would Pat would come to a lot of the uh, writing meetings at Vince's house. Uh, 
because he lived there in Connecticut still at that time. And he wasn't, and he was definitely working as the top road agent. Um, it, at one point, it was just me and Bruce. Pat would pop in from time to time. JR would pop in from time to time. That was through 96. Early 97 is when we were saddled with shit stain. Um, and then, you know, then Bruce was back at the office and it was me and shit stain. And then, um, at the, by the end of 97, I was off and it was just Vince and shit stain for a little while. And then that's when they brought the pudgy fucking goof Ferrara in. And that was for much of 98, but I never went to a creative meeting that the triple H was involved in because he wasn't involved in any at that point, And he didn't start sitting in on the production meetings until the Russo Ferrara era. And then he was not to my knowledge in the actual creative meetings, but he was sitting in at the production meetings and trying to take more of an agent type role. But if, if he did say all that, it was basically an oversimplification of what he said, or it was an oversimplification of what he did. Well, to kind of tie everything together to that first part of the question, or that first question, where do you think Triple H would be today if he had not married Stephanie? And let's say he, he could either be in the WWE or outside of the WWE. Where do you think he would be as a wrestler or potentially as a wrestling executive today? He'd be... he. Uh, <sighs> He would either be one of the guys that was on top in the Attitude Era that they bring back and, and treat fairly well, uh, making Legends appearances, or he would have transitioned to an agent and probably be the senior agent or whatever. He would not be a fucking multi-multi-multi-multi-multi-billionaire or millionaire, and uh, he would not probably, uh, you know... I don't think he would have gotten an open checkbook for NXT. I don't think he would have been able to do some of the things of the magnitude he has done unless he had the family connection, but he probably still would have been involved in a lot of it. Maybe not even full time anymore. If, uh, you know, if he'd gone as far as he could go as an agent or a producer or whatever, and he didn't really want to do it anymore because he had the money, he might be retired and just making shots as a talent. He wouldn't be hurting. Because once he had that fucking run from the late 90s through the mid-2000s, you know, and he's a smart guy, he would be fixed. But uh, I, don't, I don't see these global fucking developmental territories popping up around the fucking earth and all that other stuff uh, unless he was in the family. This first one, Jim? All right. Sent so um, my, my initial thoughts... Uh, and whatnot, because that's actually the end of the video there. Um, yet again, the link will be down in the description. You guys can check that out at your leisure. Uh, my initial thoughts as it pertains to Triple H, if he didn't get married to Steph, uh, I think as a wrestler, I think he, I think he would have, he wouldn't be making all those frequent appearances that he does every once in a while as a talent, as you, as I should say. I think he would be more in a, he would, from a professional standpoint, he'd be back in an office position. Uh, something along those lines. I think it makes a lot more sense. I think he's like, yet as I said earlier, he's versatile. He can adapt well. I think that's something more his leisure. I don't see him coming back to having as many titles as he had. And uh, Hunter's put his body through a lot. Now, uh, if you you find it on YouTube, there are some videos of some of his workouts and whatnot, which is extremely impressive for somebody who's fifty, I think. Uh, maybe even over 50, uh, if he's even that old. But um, I think it's extremely impressive. I just think he's he's gone through a lot. So he doesn't have to put all that wear and tear on his body anymore. Now it's merely about just pushing the talent, about pushing the, 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 the business and the content in general. And I think, uh, in truth, I don't even if he didn't marry Steph, I don't think he would have stayed with China. Uh, to be honest, um, but that is what that is. As a wrestler, I think that'd have been done. I think he he wouldn't he wouldn't feel that that itch to go out there and try to prove it, try to prove it anymore. And I don't know if Vince would keep giving him the opportunities to do so. I think behind the scenes, though, him working his way up to Vince's right hand man, sure, certainly wouldn't be his heir apparent if he wasn't part of the family. But certainly moving up to a right hand position 
I agree with Jim that he wouldn't have had all the other opportunities that was given to him later on the, the McMahon checkbook. But I like to think that at least some of his input would still carry weight, at least some weight. Neither here nor but it's it's kind of hard to say. And that and Sean would have pulled for him. Sean Michaels would have definitely have pulled for him. And Sean's still around. Jesus Christ, Sean's on the payroll, has been on the payroll, and has never allegedly ever really come off the payroll. So keep that in mind. All right, ladies and gentlemen, give me a chance to go ahead and clean this up and uh, give you final thoughts, and then we can move on. I'll let you guys go with your day. So, yet again, the original video will be down in the description. Thank you very much to Jim Cornette and Brian Lass for, uh, for what they do. I think it's an interesting conversation to be had. I don't think we should undercut Triple H. Uh, you're king of kings. You know what I mean? The, the game. The cer one, of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite monikers that he has is the Cerebral Assassin which was given to him by Jim Ross. I think that he's made his mark on the game for better or worse. Uh, I think that... I think he could go far in the business. I think he wouldn't feel the need to be latched on to Hunter. I mean, latched on to the WWE. He could have gone to other places. Who knows what he could have done in Japan. Uh, not, as a, not necessarily as a performer, but just behind the scenes. Uh, who knows what he could have done there. Who knows what he could have done in Mexico uh, if he chose to go that way? I mean, he's a he's a a very very talented individual who could help a business pretty much wherever he's willing, wherever he's gonna go. And after the Attitude Era, he had the type of respect where you know he could command it. He probably wouldn't get the money that the WWE uh, the WWF slash WWE was gonna pay him, but um. I think he could still make shit happen, to be honest. I think he, you could take the ball and run with it. I think when Jarrett left the TNA, I think if Hunter didn't marry in, um, or given the time period, of course, who knows? Jarrett might have tried to ask him to come out there and try to help him and so on and so forth. And at that time, Hunter had been deep into, had been deep into the politics and the workings of the business that he probably would have been able to sweep up the bullshit before, you know, everything went to hell. Um, but that's neither here nor there. I'm not trying to peg him as some type of wrestling savior. I just think that... I think he could... We'll never really know what he could have done outside of the WWE if he didn't marry it. And I think that, and I think that opens up for an interesting conversation, depending on where and how you guys want to take it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for uh, thank you very much for listening in. I very much appreciate it, and I will see you guys for the next one. I'm not gonna hit you guys with my uh, <laughs> with what 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 I'm thinking about being my patented uh, uh, exit saying yet and whatnot. At least not this particular day, but I'll remember it later. But ladies and gentlemen, this is getting over versus being put over, and uh, I'll see you guys for the next one <laughs> later, guys. Ha <laughs> ha.